Okay, folks, Steve, the Cat 3 Cat on Feet. Um, this is a fresh one, we're sort of in November here, so the six metre season is about to start up. And uh, I thought I'd uh, show you a couple of simple antennas that you can make with uh, the six metres. Don't need anything uh, flash, you don't have to spend any, a lot of money, just go to your local hardware store or Bunnings in Australia, and uh, you can buy everything off the, most of the stuff off the shelf. Um, and that will sort of get you on the air for six metres. I've got two antennas here that are ready. Um, one is a, uh, a three element and the other is a four element. Both of them are the designs of YU-70F. Uh, Pop, they call him, uh, from Serbia. You look up his webpage, YU Yankee Uniform 7 Echo Foxtrot. Uh, just put that to Google and you'll come up with his webpage. We've got them all the measurements down in the designs. So these are what's called an OWA design antenna. Very efficient. The four element one I ran last year at about six metres and I worked seven or eight countries from VK3, so they work pretty good. Uh, good low swerve, good bandwidth, and he's just generally really, really light. So, anyway, so why don't we um, swap over to them and uh, swap over to the other side and we can have a look and see the different design points of these antennas and see how they work. Alright, let's hang on. So, this is a three element version. 1.5 meter long boom, pretty simple. Um, the feed point, if you'll note, is direct. So it basically goes in here. The two connecting elements. I'm using these hydraulic line clamps to hold the uh, to hold the elements in place, and they also insulate it from all the other metal. So I note I've got two screws in there because it's a single screw version, and uh, using 20 mil bits of. Uh, Aluminium stock, and these I think are 10 or 12, 10 or 12 millimeter um, aluminium. Pretty basic. To make the driven element plate, I use a plated flat bar that you can normally get from Bunnings. This flat bar here um, doesn't cost a lot of money, and the antenna brackets are available from Bunnings as well. You basically drill a hole through there. They're 50 mil wide, so you can use any long pole. But yeah, very very simple design and construction. Doesn't take a lot of work, probably an afternoon would be enough. All the measurements are there. It doesn't have to be ab absolutely, doesn't have to be absolutely uh, exact in your measurements, but close enough is good enough. But uh, keep it fairly, fairly uh, close to that. So we'll go up and have a look at the four element one. This is a two and a half meter long boom. Um, here it is. They're both down at the moment, so it's quite a few. So that's the four element version. Yeah, back a bit so you can get an actual glass of the side of it. Oh, this one has the choke on it. I only use a choke, which just sort of helps with the common modes and helps it keep it all calm. His rough has been in operation for about two years. That gives you an idea, a bit of weathering and things like that. Slightly thicker boom. This one might be 25 mil or 30 mil, but it's uh, still quite light, so be help one-handed without really too much trouble and the same method. So I've built larger ones of these, I've built the five element and I've built the um, and I've built a, uh, a seven element. Five, five element with a four and a half meter long boom which is a really good antenna but then I've built one, this one I've upgraded my license I built a, um, a seven element which is a monster. 8.9 meters long boom, there's a, another video on the YouTube channel about it what a cracker antenna that was. That's <laughs> so the difference between the small ones, they're really good, they work well with sporadic ease or even tap. I worked at Pan with mine, no problems. With the seven element, it was just like entering another world. The signals that you hear are just so much different. So even between a six element, I'd say, and a seven element is huge. I worked Southern Argentina on six metres with the other one, in digital mode, but it's not that, it's the fact that I actually worked them. And you're just hearing things, and I had people commenting, you know, you're 50 over 9, and I thought I was running with barefoot, so in sideband, you know, 1200 miles away. Really, really exceptional. So that's them, they're pretty simple, the designs. I'll, uh, they're just uh, very, very easily put together. There are a couple of methods that you can use to secure the, uh, the elements. One way is that, and then the other way is they put a plate on and then use hose, just a piece of hose and then insulate it on. 
um, that's a simple method but this one should do to keep it covered anyway that's my take on a cheap and light antenna that would probably weigh about five kilos if that see the poles I've got here that's what you do you get a six meter pole push it up and I'll show you one of the other places where how I mount them I'll come over here because here's the mess of the garden so I have a, this kind of thing down the bottom here but this means you put a pole into it and then it tilts up a lot easier use them to hold it into place but then I mount it to the top with an arm like that and then uh, running the TV brackets through there you can get them I don't think from Bunnings but you can find them from TV hardware supply shops uh, there's a guy in Melbourne who sells them at a couple of hands there so yeah pretty simple and that sort of holds it up there and hang on I'll just, uh, and that's the same attachment there with using my pole that I used for the other one so give it a try this year sometime that's a tilt up proper tilt over plate that's made by shockwave antennas in Melbourne so yeah so pretty simple um, verticals are good, I've got a 6 meter vertical but I've found you just lack the gain that you need on them on 6 meters and that's why I find that the, uh, the 3 or preferably the 4 on it is uh, the best sort of compromise still was able to work uh, last last season uh, you know I did work ZL7 which is Chatham Island uh, Fiji then to the north we work Taiwan Hong Kong, Japan, uh, Indonesia, and I think that was about it. But uh, yeah, it was a really, really good season for that sort of stuff. So the transequatorial propagation, it tends to work well for. So if you're in the US, we'll probably get you down into South America and uh, places like that. And if you're lucky, possibly across to Europe, even with a four element. So look for the design. I'll have a link in the description to his webpage. But yeah, Wave 70F uh, Pop, as they call him, for his uh, great antenna designs. And his stories are funny ones. I read that at the front of the thing, and you'll hear the story. But uh, he also makes designs for 2 metres, 70 centimetres, and uh, also for HF. And his 10 metre yagis are quite good. But yeah, that's it. All right, Sim 3, thanks for, the, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. BK3, KTLT, bye bye.